Hello, my name is Camille Campbell, and I'm here with my colleague Dinesh Rigo, and we're here to talk about some of the new enhancements to our Fabric Connect or SPBM technology, really narrowing in on the VSP portfolio. Um, so as you guys know, Fabric Connect is a very innovative technology, and over the past couple of releases, we've really introduced some functionality to increase our level of differentiation in the industry. Today's presentation is about giving you a broad brush overview of some of these new capabilities, and we've really broken it into four key initiatives. So the first is really around enhancing automation. And what we're doing is we're creating self-forming, self-provisioning fabric networks that are really more plug and play. We're also extending Fabric Connect and extending VSPs right into the edge wiring closet. And we're also giving you a lot more choices in how you want to interconnect your branches and remote offices. As we push Fabric Connect right down to the edge of the network, we also need to ensure our Fabric Networks can grow and scale to the tens of thousands of nodes. And then finally, we want to make sure we give you guys management flexibility. So whether or not you want to manage your network on-prem, whether you want to leverage the cloud, or whether you want to use a combination of the two. We really want to give you that choice. So in terms of automation, automation is something we're both really excited about in terms of, of how we're enhancing our Fabric Connect technology. And we can really break it into two key initiatives. The first is around infrastructure automation and enabling these self-forming, self-provisioning fabric networks. The second major initiative really relates to the edge and providing a lot of automation at the edge and dynamic service provisioning. And I'm now gonna pass it over to Dinesh, who's gonna walk through how we actually enable this automation. Thank you, Camille. So the first thing you will notice when you upgrade to VAS 8.3 and boot the switch with no configuration files present on the switch is that all the ports are enabled by default with the port type set to AutoSense. AutoSense is a new port type, by the way. The ports belong to an onboarding ISID, which automatically builds a secure E-tree across the network with all ports in isolated mode. And this means that these ports cannot communicate with each other, adding a level of security and preventing loops. AutoSense introduces a port state machine that allows the port to change its state based on sensing what it is connected to. Port states can be ISIS NNI links, fabric attached links, IP phone links, and last but not least, user links with or without network access control enabled. With automated onboarding onto either XIQ or XMC, and in the, in the near future, XIQ SE, the IQ agent and ZTP plus, also known as zero touch provisioning, processes are enabled by default. And the switch uses the onboarding ISID to establish a secure session with the management system, get an IP address, register with the management system, and is onboarded onto the network. This process eliminates the need to manually configure a management IP address on the switch, a default gateway, and a DNS server. This automated onboarding capability was first introduced in VAS 8.2. Now, when a, an AutoSense port is connected to a zero-touch fabric-capable switch, the fabric parameters are dynamically provisioned on the switch, and it becomes part of the fabric automatically. You will need one seed switch with a nickname server. Uh, this nickname server needs to be enabled. And after that, all NNI links that other switches are connected to the fabric with will be dynamically provisioned with all the necessary fabric parameters, eliminating the need to globally configure Fabric Connect on the switch and then enable it on each NNI interface. AutoSense ports also detect when a Fabric Attached client or proxy is connected and enables the Fabric Attached server dynamically. This section covers the automated infrastructure capabilities and Camille will walk you through some of the new edge fabric automation capabilities. Yep, thanks Dinesh. So before we get into some of the automation at the edge, I first of all just wanted to review our universal switches. 
So at the end of last year, we actually came out with a product family called the 5520 series. And this is our mid-tier series of switches. In June, uh, we are going to make available the 5420 series, our value series of switches. But what's really unique about these switches is the fact that they can be configured to run either our XSOS operating system or our VOS operating system. So when, of course, these universal switches are enabled with VOS, that's what brings you to the automated fabric edge. And when you're running VOS on these switches, you get to take advantage of that cool auto sense capabilities that Dinesh walked us through. So as you can see here on the slide, we have some phones, we have some IoT devices, we have some clients connecting into our VSP edge switch. As long as there's a radius server configured in the network, what happens is that these clients are detected, an authentication request is sent to the radius server, and then based on the credentials of that device, the service as well as the ACL will dynamically be provisioned. Now, many of you who are running Fabric Connect might be saying, okay, well, how is this actually different than what I have today with my ERS switches or my XSoft switches, leveraging Fabric Attach and Extreme Control? And really the difference here is how little you're actually provisioning on this switch. All you're doing on this switch is you're enabling radius, you're enabling EEP and MEEP on a switch, on the switch, and then you're not provisioning anything else um, on a per port basis. So this really gets into a little bit more details on what the fabric edge would really look like. So um, you can see here, uh, our switches are, are, are connected together and all these yellow connections represent uh, Fabric Connect NNI links. So essentially what you're doing is you're unboxing these switches, you're cabling them together, you're powering them up, and all these connections are gonna come up dynamically. You want to plug in your AP, again, the Fabric Attach server piece is provisioned on the switch. And then of course you get the ability to uh, securely onboard your clients, uh, assign them the right service and ACL at the switch, and also provide those dynamic moves, adds, and changes. Um, the one thing I did want to point out is this is not a traditional stacked architecture. However, we've built in so much automation and so much simplicity with being able to run Fabric Connect end to end across the network uh, that we're really trying to drive down overall operating expenses at the edge. Um, of course, because we do have universal switches, you can also, of course, load the XSOS operating system on them. And this is a completely valid option, and both of these have their relative strengths. And with regards to the XSOS edge, what you would get is some management simplicity with stacking. And we actually even have some new functionality relating to how we automate the stacking process on our XSOS devices. Um, you can take advantage of the comprehensive policy capabilities available in XSOS, including layer seven application filtering. Um, you also have fully featured fabric attach capabilities and audio video bridging as well. Uh, the main point is that either of these edge solutions is completely interoperable with your Fabric Connect core. Um, you can choose to deploy each in different parts of the network, taking advantage of a common hardware platform or you can switch from one to the other um, as requirements change, preserving your investment in the hardware. So in addition to extending Fabric Connect right to the wiring closet edge, we also want to provide increased options for interconnecting your branch offices. So many of you are looking to the public internet to really drive down, drive down WAN expenses. So about a year and a half ago, we came out with the Extreme Access Platform 1400. And that provided IPsec encryption over Fabric Extend tunnels, so you could leverage the public internet for um, connecting your branch offices. Now, what we did in VOS 8.2 is we introduced a functionality called the Fabric IPsec Gateway. Again, it's doing the, the encryption of Fabric Extend tunnels, and it's a, a virtual machine that runs alongside the network operating system of certain BSP switches. So in VOS 8.2, this functionality was introduced in the 7400 series. So now that can act as a head end, aggregating tunnels from many branch office locations. Then we extended that capability to the VSP 4900 series, specifically our 10 gig models, to provide a higher capacity, higher speed uh, solution for some of your larger branch offices. And of course, to ensure quality of experience, 
over the public internet, we're supporting things like traffic shaping, WAN compression, fragmentation reassembly. Um, so, so yes, many options now for public and private WAN connect connectivity. Um, as we push Fabric Connect right to the very edge of the network, many of you might be concerned about perhaps exceeding the scaling guidelines uh, uh, that are about 500 nodes in your Fabric Connect environment. So our solution for that is something we call multi-area. And multi-area allows you to build separate independent Fabric networks and then interconnect them and manage them holistically. Um, we have built in a lot of flexibility into our multi-area capabilities. So you can basically extend services across all your various areas, or you can actually restrict certain ISIDs to just a specific area of your network, say, for example, your data center. Um, the other thing that's important to note is multi-area will be initially supported on our VSP 7400 series, and it will be coming out in our next VOS release, 8.4, in June. And the VSP 7400s will act as your border nodes interconnecting your various areas. Um, there is a deep dive on this topic here at the show and as well a deep dive into our Fabric Edge solution as well. So Dinesh and I really encourage you guys to, to check those out. Um, and then the, the last piece that's new, it really relates to management and it relates to something we call the Extreme Cloud IQ site engine. So what this is, is it's an evolution of our extreme management center. And this is how we get that, that optional connectivity into the extreme Cloud IQ platform to be able to leverage some of the AI ML driven analytics. Um, the important thing to note is that if you are an extreme management center customer today, there is a documented uh, migration path, there's wizards to really make this as seamless as possible. And the other thing that's very important is that you're not gonna lose any functionality. You're not gonna lose any capacities as you transition. Um, once you get to Extreme Cloud IQ Site Engine, you have an option to remain air gapped, or you have that optional ability to connect into the public cloud. Um, if you're a new, cu new customer, if you haven't adopted any centralized management tools, you could go to the Extreme Cloud IQ Site Engine or you could go to Extreme Cloud IQ, and we're continuing to add a lot more functionality related to switching. And soon you're going to see a new feature called Network 360 switching, which really aggregates a lot of health information on your wired environment and brings it up into a nice consolidated view. So with that, I'm going to pass it back to Dinesh for segmented management. Thank you, Camille. So segmented management is another relatively new feature and something that you should know about. It's a capability where the management plane is separated from the control plane, both from a process and a data path perspective. So starting with VOS 8.2, segmented management is the only way to manage switches. So if you plan to upgrade to VOS 8.2 or higher, please make sure you review the upgrade section of the release notes as some migration steps are necessary prior to the upgrade. Now, if you look at the screen on the top, side, the image shows you uh, how the switches were managed prior to VOS 8.2. So you can see that you can either use an outer band interface or any IP interface on the box to manage the switch. But with segmented management, as you can see on the bottom right of the screen, starting with VOS 8.2, you can have one or a combination of management interfaces, and there's only three of them. You can ha have an in-band circuitless IP address. You can have a in-band VLAN management address. And last but not least, you can also have an out-of-band management IP address on products that actually have an out-of-band interface. These IP addresses can be IPv4 or IPv6. So segmented management has a number of benefits ranging from improved security and stealth, better visibility into management statistics, symmetrical management traffic flows to and from the switch, and of course, the automated onboarding that I talked about previously. And with that, uh, that really wraps up uh, today's session. Uh, I know it was a broad brush uh, introduction to many of our capabilities, and we really encourage you guys to check out uh, other Fabric Connect sessions today at the show. Thank you.